Hello, I'm Rebecca Flaherty and this is another weekly pattern tutorial to inspire you and get those creative little flowers blooming in your head. This week we'll be making this pattern here. You can grab the Procreate stamp brush from the freebie library on my website and as always I'll be using my pattern maker canvas and brush set to sketch out and build this pattern. If you don't have the pattern maker canvas brush set you can still follow along just make yourself a square document, this one's 12 inches square at 300 dpi and you need to create a new layer, I'll just hide all of these and you need to make a diamond the same as this one so the quickest way to do that is going to be to fill this empty layer with colour tap to select, rotate 45 degrees and fit to canvas then add a layer above it and with black or any colour you fancy using just draw roughly a diamond shape like this. Then you can delete this one underneath and as long as you've got a diamond that goes all the way off the edges like this in every direction you're good to go. That last part is very important when you tap to transform this layer you need to have the whole width and height of the canvas selected. You can find links for all the resources in the video description so now let's jump in with the tutorial. So let's go to our layers, go down to our sketch folder and I'm going to start on my draw here first layer which is an empty layer. So if you've drawn out your diamond, add a layer above it and start drawing on that empty layer now. I'm going to grab the orange stamp from my fruit stamp brush set which you can get from my freebie library and I'm just going to stamp some of these out onto the canvas here. That's an okay size, that is 30% and I'm going to add another layer, grab the other orange brush which is slightly different, I'll make the brush size of this 30% as well and stamp one of those. And then I'm going to duplicate and move these around the canvas to get them in place and then we'll illustrate over the top. So these aren't the final motifs we're going to be drawing over the top of these. If you've seen any of my other videos or reels on Instagram you know I'll say don't transform and move around your motifs and that's true for finished motifs but these are just in our sketch layer so that's okay. So let's put these around the canvas and the reason I've done these on a separate layer at this point is so that I can duplicate and move them around easily before we commit to merging them down with the, the sketch diamond. So we're just going to place these around remembering that whatever we put on this edge is also going to be repeated on this edge and whatever we put on this edge is going to be repeated down here so I'm just going to fill this one and this one first and some of the middle and then we'll put that around the outside and then fine tune it afterwards. So that's probably enough on there to make a start. So I'm going to pinch to merge all of these together now and I'm going to merge it down with the diamond. So I've got all of this on one layer, diamond and motifs. And that's transparent layer. Let's put the background back in and then we're going to duplicate this layer, turn snapping and magnetics on and then we can drag these up and over to the side till you see those orange lines and then you'll know it's snapped right up into the corner and if you're using the pattern maker canvas you'll see that these line up nicely too just to give you that extra visual that it's lined up properly. And we can duplicate this bottom layer again and bring it over to there. On this one you'll see like that one was empty and it's because we haven't got anything down in here. So this part here is this part of the canvas there so that's why there's nothing up in that one. So you need to do this in all four of the corners and then that's the parts we have filled in at the moment. So now that we've got these edges in we can now put some more motifs into the middle. So I'm going to invert this layer so I can see what's what. So the bits that are around the outside, the duplicated parts, they're green and our main pattern parts are pink. This is the part of your pattern making process to spend the most time in. All the extra time you spend here getting this part just right is going to be what gives you that nice even looking pattern at the end. Only one way to find out though and that's to do another little test of this pattern. So let's merge all these green ones down, we'll get, sorry, merge all these pink ones down, we'll get rid of the green ones because we've changed stuff in here, that green around the edge is no longer correct now. So we'll duplicate this, tap to transform, turn our snapping and magnetics back on and then put these around the edges.
I'm going to look at this from a more like zoomed out perspective now. So I'm going to swipe down with three fingers, tap copy all, come up here to my top layer, swipe down again with three fingers and tap paste. And then I can drag this up into the middle there and you'll see 1800. Duplicate that and snap it over to the side, pinch those together, duplicate them and bring that down. And I think the only things we need to fix are here, like that feels too big a gap. So I think if I move that across and maybe just shuffle that one a little bit. So on this pattern, that equates to that one and that one, I think. So let's do this one first. Let's invert this top layer so we can see what's what. So it's this one and this one. So I'm going to use my select tool and I'm going to cut around this. It's okay to cut round and move parts like that as long as you don't cut off the edge, the very corner there. And we've got this one to move. I think I kind of want the edges brought into the middle so that I can see properly what space I have available there. So I'm going to delete this top layer. And then a thing which we do when we want to see off the edges and bring the edges into the middle. We can duplicate this layer, tap to transform with snapping and magnetics on, snap it over to the side here and then the other one bring that over to the side as well and you'll have an X instead of a diamond and if you zoom in you'll see that's all nicely lined up so that you know it's in the right place. So now you can pinch those two together and we can duplicate that and put it around the edges in exactly the same way and it will fill in these parts for us. I'll invert the colours on this top one and then we can see it's this one here and I think I just want to rotate this one round a little bit. So I'm going to be careful not to grab any of that middle bit. Let's turn snapping off. that works there in terms of interplaying with these but then that's going to leave a big gap there but I think if we get this in place we can figure out the rest when we put it back into the middle again so let's leave that there when I delete this top one because we've changed things we're going to put this pink one back into the middle with snapping and magnetics on so we're going to go from having an x to having a diamond again now and then we offset things around the edges. So at this point, I'm just gonna fast forward through this section and you can watch how I fine tune, adjust, then check it in a large scale and then go back and adjust it again. And then I'll catch up with you at the end when we've got the pattern looking how I want it. And once you're at the stage where you've got everything in place, we're ready to go ahead and start illustrating our motifs. So on this top layer, I'm gonna invert this so I know what's what. And the only bits we need to illustrate are the ones in pink. The ones in green will be made by duplicating these later. So let's turn on our pattern layer. And on this layer here, I'm just going to trace over these orange shapes. We'll be changing the colours around later, um, but for now I'm just going to draw them in orange. And I'm going to use my tracing crayon. If you've never made a pattern like this before with the diamond tutorial and you're feeling a bit lost, then check out this beginner intro video to the concept which explains everything in loads more detail than I am here. So this one here which goes off the edges we're going to illustrate that in our extra group later. So we'll just work with these for now. Um, I'm going to fill these with colour drop. So now we've got all our oranges illustrated. I'm actually going to move the sketch layer up on top of our pattern group and now I'm going to add a layer above this kind of base shape and choose a different colour for this so that it stands out. We'll choose, let's go for the dark red. Not going to be the final colour, but it just needs to stand out. And I'm going to clip it to the orange layer. And then I'm going to go and follow these lines like this. Join that up. And then I can fill those. So what we're looking for is I hide the sketch layer, something like that. I'm just going to go ahead and do that for all of them. 
if you want to make it easier to see whether you're closing up the shape then maybe start up here and then you can see that you're starting and finishing in the same place that's probably going to be easier and then again we'll go around and fill all those these look like pink grapefruit now or blood oranges I change the background color to blue or teal whatever you want to call it i'm gonna alpha lock this bottom layer of oranges and fill that with white i'm gonna add a layer above which will automatically get clipped because it's already got something clipped above it i'm gonna grab orange and my fun sketch brush and i'm gonna scribble all over it with this like mid orange color there In fact, I'll turn off the sketch for this so I can see better what I'm doing. You don't need to worry about getting the bits that are underneath the, the red here. It's just the white bits you want to be covering. And then add another layer above this again. And then with this darker orange, I'm going to just draw a thin bit of orange around the outside there. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to turn the textures on. These are the seamless textures that come with the Pattern Maker Canvas. And you can see how it adds the increased saturation there to those. I love it when I forget that I've turned them off and then I turn them back on and I get to see it come to life and look magic like that. And now we can alpha lock the red bit and we'll make that white. And then what we'll actually do now is unclip that so that's now spilling out past the edges of the orange I'm going to tap on this orange layer here I'm going to tap select then I'm going to come up here to the bit that was red a second ago and I'm going to tap mask and that's now masked off the area that was showing underneath I'm actually going to fill these with that orange color and then hide this so I've got this layer here with the like the scalloped shapes on which has the mask on it and then I've applied another layer above that and clipped it to all of that and then I'm going to draw on this with the darker orange color I love how juicy and scribbly these are looking now so that's all of these oranges illustrated now the next job is to go and work on this one in the extra folder so to do that i'm gonna swipe down with three fingers and copy all and turn the extra folder on and i'm gonna paste that into it you'll see it got like extra textury as i did that and that's because we copied the textures and then pasted it with the textures applied to it and then we've got the textures again going over the top so i'm gonna turn this one off just so it doesn't look too wild and let's duplicate this layer need to zoom out before we transform that turn snapping and magnetics back on and we're going to snap this over to the edge there until we have those orange lines in this bottom one we can just bring over to the other side again making sure it's snapped into place and you can see there our diamonds nicely lined up in the middle so we know it's all good so now we just repeat all of those steps for illustrating that orange slice on this one here. So I'll just fast forward through all of that. Actually, let's be clever and do a transition. So, so there's our extra orange now illustrated in there. So to put this pattern together and build out our repeat tile, we don't want to flatten anything in a way that means we can't go back and edit it later if we want to. So I'm going to duplicate this whole extra group um, I'm going to delete the pasted in bit and the marker and then I'm going to tap on it and tap flatten. So that's only flattened the copy and we still have all of this to go back to if we wanted to. Now we can do the same with our pattern layer. So delete or hide the pattern marker, duplicate it and tap flatten. 
I'm going to drag that out of that group and up to the top there. And now we can turn off our layers knowing that we've got intact copies of all of this down there if we want to change anything afterwards. So to build out this tile, we need to put this extra orange back over to the sides. And we're going to do that the same way as where we moved the sketch into the middle, changed it into an X. We're going to do the same kind of thing with this one. We need to be able to grab the whole canvas though. So I'm going to put a mark in each of the corners here. And then that will allow me to, when I duplicate it, grab the whole thing. We've got snapping on and I can snap it over to this edge here. Then I can take the other one and drag that over to there. So now where it cuts off here, it carries on over that side. There we go. Now we can show this one and let's pinch those two to merge them together. Now we need to move this around the edges in the same way as we did when we were building out the sketch. So let's put a mark in the corners again so we can grab the whole canvas and duplicate this and drag it out into all the corners just like we did when we were building out our sketch. Normally I would do this final part building out the tile in Photoshop using smart objects so that I don't have to flatten anything at all and for example if I needed to update something on this orange here because it's in a smart object it would also automatically update the duplicated part of it down there. So if you want to know more about that I've got a class on that on Skillshare and I'll put a link for that in the description. But for now I'm just going to merge these top four together and with a proper eraser let's erase those marks in the middle and on the bottom layer we can erase the ones on the corner. So that is nearly ready and nearly our finished pattern tile. There's just one more thing to do and that's turn the textures back on. There we go. Lovely sunny sunshiny oranges with that lovely texture on there. So let's build this out into a little preview here now. So I'm going to swipe down with three fingers, tap copy all, come up here to my textures and tap paste. And then I'm just going to turn off these two layers there. And then I'm going to tap to transform and we'll bring this up to there and just duplicate it around the canvas the same way that we were when we were building out a preview of the sketch just zoom in to make sure it looks good in the middle and then we can pinch those two together thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this juicy orange tutorial and i can't wait to see your finished patterns over on instagram Tag me at Becky Flaherty so that I can see them and share them in my stories. If you get stuck or if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help. All the links for all the resources I've used are in the video description. And if you want to see more videos like this every week, then make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. Have fun, stay creative, and I will see you next time.